That clubhouse right there can only mean one thing. We're back at Beacon Hill. Oh boy, this is going to be a fun day. What's up, everybody? It's Buffalo Ben 15 Golf back at it again. And today, we got an exciting one today. Beacon Hill Golf Club out in Commerce Township, Michigan. 69.3 rating, 132 slope. I mean, that's not the hardest course out there, but let me tell you, there are some tough, tough holes on this course. For instance, the second hole here, where I got a double bogey last time and um, just absolutely horrible tee shot. Cold Stone topped it. Not Cold Stone. That shot did not deserve ice cream. Okay, off to, um, by the way, I've never been to Cold Stone. Tell me in the comments below if you think it's good. Um, but yeah, there's number five right there, number 13 right here, one that I didn't even see the ball go OB, but it went OB over the green, had no idea at all that that was going to happen. Um, number um, 12 here, one that I did well on last time, but it's still going to be a threat. Number seven here, the hardest hole in the course. Three shots of just utter terror. OB both sides. Let me tell you something, guys. Beacon Hill is one of the toughest courses I have ever played, in my opinion. The first time I ever played here was not the 82 that I shot. I actually played around earlier than that, where I shot like a 45 on the front nine did pretty bad on the start of the back nine i thought I, I i and i just thought i was playing so horrendously i legit threw my scorecard away and played the last six holes in like a self best ball scramble that's how frustrated i was um yes and you can't let that happen to you you know i mean as well but that's beacon hill for you one of the toughest courses in metro detroit in my opinion and uh, let me tell you, Yards to go. that is behind. not entirely subjective because holes number two and holes number five were featured on Michigan Golf Live's hardest 18 holes in Metro Detroit. Both of them. Absolutely brutal holes, both of them. And as you see here, the um, first shot with... Um, I bladed over the green, and after you guys saw that, maybe hole number one should be added to that hardest 18-hole list. In to the tree. It did not go OB. It went under the tree, but it was unplayable. Had to drop. This is four. Oh, my God. We're starting off so horribly already. At least this was a good chip shot. I did pretty well on this one, so that's good. Um, yeah, got to stay positive, right? So off to, um, a birdie now for, or no, a bogey putt now, birdie putt. How dare I say birdie putt? I wish this was a birdie putt. Ah, double bogey to start. Ah, sorry for the metal noise. I'm uh, actually on a golf course right now right. as I'm, um, this is as I'm voicing play. this over. <laughs> Very difficult. Probably not the greatest idea. Back down. We just got to hit a shot. Redemption series, double feature. Holes two and hole five. Let's do it. So as you see, trying to pump myself up as much as I possibly can, trying to pick myself up just because I am that desperate right now. Well, I wouldn't say desperate. It's only the first hole, but still, I, I've just got to... I've just got to be able to reel it in, be able to stay calm. I don't know what to say. Little flashback for you there. Sorry. Just uh, stopped talking abruptly, but I wanted you guys to see that. Just a flashback as to what happened last time. You bet it was in my head. But this time, we hit it. Solid contact. We are over the water. We are dry. We are going to have a chip just off the left side of the green. This is a pretty big green. Even though this was a pretty big draw, it's a pretty big green. So we're still in decent shape. 
So definitely feeling good after that tee shot for sure. Hey, it's um, off that. to um, yeah, just um, telling dad um, that's where you want to miss on this side because there's actually wetlands to the right of this green over past the cart oh, path, which from yep. this far out, they're in play. Do not kid yourself. So um, as you see there, dad hits a little scuzzy when it actually skipped along the water and he ended up like inside the hazard, but he could play it. Ah, oh, dad, I'm, I'm sorry, but I really wanted to bite him. Everybody gets their turn. You hear me? <laughs> and everybody gets their turn with the flub chip shots apparently as well. Just making a mess of myself out here right now. So trying to step up to the next chip shot and, um, yep what happens after you flub a chip shot you hit it too hard yeah that's uh what happens that's what happens right there um yeah the first chip shot was actually up against the fescue uh you can't really see it from here you can see the top of it maybe um but uh, it was a pretty tough lie but we can't make excuses when we're trying to chip onto the green and try to salvage a par on a really hard hole and because of that shot, so Jack, that happens. Takes four to get down. Forty yards from the flag. Not good. Not good at all. Not good at all. Ah, uh, we're four over through two holes. Why? Why? Why is Beacon Hill do this to me? I don't know, guys. But um. We just got to keep going. We just got to figure out how to keep going. And that takes a lot of work sometimes. And um, as you see here, pulling less than driver. I really do want to go for this in two, but again, you can't risk it this early in the round. You got to swallow your pride sometimes. And um, as you see, I hit a very good shot. So um, it's going to be a long climb back up to the top, but that's a good start. Hopefully we can build off of it. So here we are now on uh, the approach shot. I kept it up the left, which is big because the left from the left side of the fairway, it's a lot easier to get to the green from than from the right. So as you can see, I'm I mean, even though this is a really stupid shot and I shouldn't be trying this, as you see there, I basically top it. I mean, it wasn't a stone-cold top, but I did top that one. I was lucky to stay out of the water short of the green. And um, in hindsight, I should have just laid up because it's just such a small green, one of the smallest on the course. And um, I, I should have just known that. And so now, as you can see here... We have got a 60-yard shot, OB long of the green, water short of the green, tree overhanging, so I can't hit a wedge. So I'm trying to bump and run a 9-iron. Very difficult shot that I actually do okay with. I mean, I mean these bad, crazy shots I hit okay shots out of. I mean, I find a made a way, find a way to make it work so um I see what you're that's doing. good at least we got that going for us um so behind the green now just chipping here um very tough little chip shot just because the green runs away from me got to be very um delicate with the pace and as you can see i did okay there. gonna have a little work left but Shouldn't be too bad of a par putt. This was dad's par putt. Oh man, this course is getting everybody today. As you can see, even Big E is uh, getting a little bit tired. You can hear him grunting a little bit. Um, they, Dad and Big E actually shot pretty good rounds. Um, dad shot an 83, Big E shot a 95. So um, that, that's really good for the both of them. Um, Dad's been struggling lately, and um, 
He's lately he's been doing better. He's turning a corner. Oh, oh that pot goodness. turned a few corners, this, didn't this it? It's beyond hard to watch. Five over through three holes, just like that. I thought I was gonna get out with a par. Yeah, I thought wrong. I did. I thought wrong. So there's that. And, um, yeah. As you can see, I mean, even just take a look at my posture as I step up to the shot. I, I, I'm dead, you know? And as you can see, a little bit hunched over on the back, come across it a little bit. <sighs> it's the difference between left side of the fairway and barely stayed in. I mean, this one even almost went out. So, um, yeah, guys, it's not, it's not looking good for me right about now. And, um, yeah, but I did get to drop on the other side of the path. Rules are there to help you, right? <laughs> Watch me complain about another ruling later in this video. <laughs> oh my God. I'm at Bay Point right now while I'm uh, voice voicing this over. Um, never shot better than an 84 there, so trying to get my revenge there right now. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear the um, sound of the mower in the background. Try not to pay attention to it, although it may distract you from the terrible golf that I'm playing. And another putt from Dad here that, oh my God goodness another one that he gets robbed on i mean you you'd almost rather you were that putt instead of the closer one sometimes just because you see that and you're like oh god the hole just got smaller so um as you can see here that makes me try to be too perfect with this line and i second guess myself and i rob myself of a par I'm not, the course isn't robbing me, guys. I'm robbing myself. I'm making miscues happen because I'm not thinking enough. Or sometimes I'm thinking too much. And as you see here, this is one of the places where you can definitely think too much. Listen in. Hardest 18 holes in Metro Detroit, everyone. Well, this is one of them, anyway. And they got us on even tougher angle than last now, time. As you see here, going back, this is my last tee shot. And it's gone. The woods off the tee. What's the deal? Oh, my gosh. And, um, again, I'm thinking about it. I got... I think I got the exact same club in my hands. But, like always, we got to power through in golf. Golf's not a game that's easy. And we come through here. We're dry. We're on dry land, and we got a great line, a great angle to the green. Oh, boy. That was tough. That was tough right there. Yeah, finally hit a shot. Finally hit a good shot today. That's going to be a big Very old confidence nice. booster. I mean, Very nice ball. you know, even though golf is a funny game, sometimes you do well on the hard holes but badly on the easy holes. If you do well on the hard holes, it makes you feel like you've earned your score a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? So um, definitely thinking that as I stand over this ball. I'm fired up. I take a gap wedge. Usually I won't take a gap wedge from this distance, but I was feeling it. I was feeling the fire running through me, and um, it worked out. Birdie putt coming up here. Although a pretty long one at that. And, um, yeah, birdie putt, about 50 feet. All I'm thinking here is pace, pace, pace. Try to get a two putt. And at the last second, I think, you know what? I don't want a gorilla this long. So I fall in love with the line and leave it like 15 feet short. Terrible putt. Absolutely terrible putt. So now, 
the same sort of line. Well, at least I've kind of read this putt before, so I did feel good over this. So, um, bends a lot at the end, as you guys are going to see here. How in the world did that stay short? Unbelievable. Just, oh my God. <sighs> no redemption on that hole either. All right. Even though my score is pretty much the same as it was last time I played here, I'm feeling like I'm playing better. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I'm playing a lot better. I feel like I'm hitting a lot better shots. I feel like I'm being a lot more methodic um, instead of just go for everything, go for everything, go for everything. Um, which you kind of can't do on this course, but still, when you're significantly over par through a short amount of holes, you you try to step on the gas pedal a little too hard sometimes, and um, that's what happens. The whole front of the screen is pretty straight, I would say. Yeah, so um, left Dad's putt in there for you just because... Um, he had um, a very similar putt to me. Our tee shots landed within a foot of each other, so I left that in. Free read for me. Hopefully we can take advantage with a birdie. We did get a birdie the last time we played here, but not this time. Very good putt, just pulled it a bit, but, um, I mean, straightforward par. Short hole, good confidence booster, which is, I mean, it did the job for me. Oh, and we go from the shortest hole in the course to the longest hole in the course. The par 5 seventh, three shots of terror. This hole should just be called the trio of terror. But as you can see, Dad just pipes one down the middle. Like I said, Dad had a great round today. Um, 83 is the best score I've seen him shoot in months. I mean, he had a... I mean... I hope he's not watching this. He did kind of have a rough year last year. I mean, everybody has rough patches in the season. I mean, look at my September last year. Like You got it. That 175 was surrounded by like 486s. It was stupid. I played really bad. Get up. Um, I think he got it. We all have those times, got and we just got to power through Very them. We nice. got to try to grind through them. We got to try to find what's positive, and... Um, What's positive is that I'm hitting the five wood well. I'm hitting my fairway woods well, other than that one um, today. Um, the putter's been doing okay. I've had the line good on a lot of putts, just haven't paced them right. Um, but, I mean, even you, you got to find the good within the bad, you know. And um, But there's also bad within the good, even though after two shots what they say, here... On this par five, and I had no idea this tree would be in my way because the last time I played here, I was over to the right more. So definitely a um, little bit of a predicament here. I've got an eight iron in my hand. If I really hit it just right, I can make it over that tree. But just to be safe, I'm not aiming totally over it. I'm kind of aiming at the right side. And as you can see, that was a very good play because I um, hit basically my routine draw but somehow I just absolutely juice this over the green that eight iron carried 180 I absolutely annihilated that thing I don't know what it is about my eight iron I just um seem to hit it a lot better than the rest of my clubs and um hey you got to have a strong patch of your game right um so yeah uh there's that and then I hit a pretty good chip shot from where I was, honestly. It was a very difficult ball. shot, but I executed it very well. That was just... That, that was just... Um, <laughs> that was just me showing off right there. What a great par. Both times I've played this hole, I've played it magnificently. Just absolutely magnificently. And, uh, yeah, on to hole eight. So, a little more open of a drive here, thankfully. I needed it as I go left again. 
I was left very far in this whole borderline OB, and um, luckily this time we uh, stayed uh, out of the OB. I mean, I aimed a little further right just because the wind was kind of going from uh, right to left, so um, that is kind of why I did that. So uh, pitching wedge just over the bunker, it rolled through the bunker, and um, I just blocked this a little bit. Um, I didn't try to take anything off of it. Usually when I um, take something off of a, um, a shot, I block it. But this time that was not the case. Um, so this time I was, um, I don't know, maybe aimed a little bit wrong. I've been having trouble with my feet alignment lately. It's been a very big problem lately. And um, the bump and runs are getting a little better, but uh, still, that was um, a little bit friskier than I would have liked. Although, from, from that distance, with that much green to work with, I mean, the green's there. I mean, I might as well use it. I'm, I'm learning how to hit the bump and run shot more. Um, I'm getting better at it. Although that's a shot you don't practice very much up against the collar. And we've left ourselves a little meat on the bone here for bogey. Um, but we make it. So uh, all hope is not lost. We're eight over. I mean, the back nine is scorable. My thoughts were get in with par. That'll give you enough of a chance to do well on the back nine. And I uh, hit a very good drive here on um, number nine. It d doesn't quite get back to the fairway, though. The, the fairway notches off to the left, but if you carry it far enough, you'll reach it again, which I almost did, but didn't quite get there. So um, we've got a tough angle over the trees here coming up. 115, though I'm getting more comfortable with this number. good swing. I'm really going after it a little bit more. I like that. How is it? Yeah. And it bodes me well on this shot. I uh, do not actually end up on the green. The guy on the tee, I mean, I don't know if he was lying to me, well, but it did not end up on the green. It ended up on the collar. It was a really tough, there was a like a patch of hard grass behind the ball. It was really tough to play. I got another bogey. So, another 45 on the front nine at Beacon Hill. Oh, my God. What am I doing? 17 putts, two out of seven fairways hit, two out of nine greens. Only one penalty, though. So, it was just less penalties, but not quite as good irons. Just an all-around kind of just beating around the bush short of nine. Like, you feel like you're almost there. But nothing's really clicking yet. But, you know, I really wanted to impress Uncle Eddie as well as um, he was traveling north to see us again for Memorial Day weekend, which is when I played this round. I really wanted to do well for him because last year I shot two disappointing rounds, 86 at Captain's Club and 85 at Mulberry Hills when he was there. So trying to do better. Um this time around well he's here uncle eddie i know i didn't make you proud on this one but we still got the back nine to go right this buffalo ben 15 signing off have a good day everyone